Okay. We are on Facebook right now. Belaida, I'm going to introduce you to the audience in Spanish, okay? Buenos días a todos. Gracias por acompañarnos una vez más. Estamos transmitiendo en vivo y en directo desde México para todo el mundo y especialmente a nuestros amigos latinoamericanos. Gracias por estar aquí. Gracias por acompañarnos. Es un webinario de la Asociación Mexicana en Ultrasonografía Crítica y Urgencias con su unidad de entrenamiento internacional en la ciudad de Guadalajara. Eh, bienvenidos sean todos a, a este webinario. Les recuerdo que esta, esta conferencia estará avalada por el Consejo Mexicano de Medicina Crítica, de tal manera que todos los que nos están escuchando por Facebook en este momento, les recomendamos se unan a esta conferencia a través del enlace que está publicado y se unan a, la, a través de la, trans, de, la, de la plataforma para que de esta manera quede registrada su participación y podamos enviarle una, una constancia con valor curricular por el Consejo Mexicano de Medicina Crítica. Así que sean bienvenidos. En esta ocasión, pues, tenemos un invitado muy especial al doctor Belaid Wamed desde París, Francia. Él, como ustedes saben, es un reconocidísimo eh, médico eh, investigador de la ultrasonografía crítica, especialmente en el ultrasonido pulmonar. Como seguramente ustedes han leído, yo estoy completamente seguro que muchos de ustedes en ese entusiasmo que tienen por la ultrasonografía crítica, han leído papers del doctor Belight sobre todo lo referente a los scores de aireación, a cómo evaluar la aireación durante el reclutamiento al violar, el, el, en general el ultrasonido y su utilidad en, la, en los pacientes con ventilación mecánica, creo que el doctor Belight es de los que más han escrito sobre este tema, y además algo muy importante, el doctor Belaid ha participado en, el, en las recomendaciones internacionales basadas en la evidencia que se publicaron en el 2012 en la revista Intensive Care, que son las recomendaciones que tenemos actualmente sobre ultrasonido pulmonar. Así que estamos ante un experto internacional, estoy seguro que lo van a disfrutar. Les recuerdo que esta sesión quedará grabada en nuestro sitio de Facebook de Amuscu para que todos ustedes la puedan seguir disfrutando la proyecten en una pantalla, la analicen junto con sus colegas en sus terapias intensivas, en las salas de urgencias, o simplemente ustedes la disfruten en donde quiera que estén desglosando cada una de, la, de las partes de esta sesión, la literatura, etc. Así que sean ustedes bienvenidos y les invito a disfrutar de esta fantástica experiencia académica con un experto a nivel mundial en ultrasonido pulmonar, el doctor Belay Boamé desde, desde París, Francia, al cual le damos la bienvenida Dr. Belay, welcome to Mexico in a virtual way. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for spending part of your time with us. We are really excited and we are honored. Thank you for, for joining us, Dr. Belay. Let's get started with your conference. Hey, thank you for the invitation. The pleasure is for me. And uh, uh, it, it, uh, Spanish is very close to French. <laughs> uh, I some, some words. Yes, yes, thank you so much. It's very good. I, I have to learn Spanish. <laughs> thank you. It's okay? It's, it's completely okay. Thank you so okay. much. Let's start. So, the aim of this presentation, of this lecture, is to show how to use lung ultrasound for monitoring patients with RDS. All, um, all um, the lectures can be found in two free reviews, these old reviews from critical care and this uh, review from anesthesiology published in uh, 2015. And uh, you can, if you have questions and if you want to go further, you can uh, take a look to these reviews. So let's start with the beginning with the plural sliding on the airlines. This is the normal fading of ultrasound fading examination. The skin is here. This is the picture with a linear probe. You have here the skin, the subcutaneous tissue. You can see here the intercostal muscles. We have here a rib, a shadow behind the rib, the rib, a shadow behind the rib. And we can see here five millimeter behind the, um, the rib the pleural line. This pleural line is due, uh, uh, is due to the sliding of the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. And this sliding give a movement of glithering. And we have behind, because ultrasound are not conducted 
beyond the pleura by the air, we have horizontal artifacts called eli. You all know that, and this is the normal aspect. When you have these aspects, it means that the lung is normally aerated, containing more than 80% of gas. This is what we see, for example, with the two, four megahertz probes. The rib is here, the rib is here, shadow, shadow, intercostal muscles, and we have here the lung sladings and with horizontal artifact called elites. So we can use every day, this is the outlines, we can use every day uh, at the bedside very quickly and easily lung ultrasound to make differential diagnosis of acute renal failure, essentially acute pulmonary edema, to guide mechanical ventilation, to guide weaning from mechanical ventilation, or to diagnose, to diagnose, to diagnose monitor, or manage complications related to mechanical ventilation. Let's start. Uh, this is typically what we found in patients with IRDS. We found subpleural or juxtapleural consolidation associated to multiple B lines. We found this picture in the, sorry, we found this picture essentially in the anterior zone of the chest. And if we look at the back in the most dependent zone here, near the liver and near the spleen, we will find lung consolidation associated to small pleural effusion. For example, here, this is a, a picture obtained with a linear probe. We have here the rib, the shadow, the rib, the shadow. We have here the intercostal muscles. We can see here the pleural line with the lung sliding. And if you pay attention, you can see there a lobar round hypoechoic consolidation black. This is a juxta pleural or sub pleural, whatever the name, consolidation. And you can see here multiple belines, coalescent belines associated to these sub pleural consolidation. And in patients with RDS, we will find in the anterior part of the thorax typical pictures like that, coalescent belines associated to subpleural consolidation. And we also find spared areas with the normal pattern, lung sliding plus, plus a lines. We can see also this sign. You have here, for example, a spared areas in a patient with IRDS. Intercostal muscles are here. You can see here the lung sliding, the pleural line, but if you pay attention, there is no more the true lung sliding. We have here a little movement of a pleural line related to the cardiac contraction and called the lung pulse. We have here typically a spared areas of in a higher dose patients with an abolition of the pleural side. And few some, some, some centimeters beside, in the other areas, we can have a typically picture with subpleural consolidation, abolition of uh, pleural sliding, and multiple full of b -lines. Uh, in this study conducted by Italian an Italian team uh, by Copetti, they studied the value for the diagnosis for the, diagno for the differential diagnosis between acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema and acute respiratory distress syndrome of the sign B lines abolition of log sliding and juxtapleural or subpleural consolidation. And look. 
we have in black patient uh, with uh, with cardiogenic edema and in white patients with uh, IRDS. As you can see, IES is for alveolo interstitial syndrome. The sign of the alveolo interstitial syndrome is the B lines. B lines are found in a large amount in IRDS, in IRDS and in cardiac edema. B lines are not specific of IRDS. They are just a sign of alveolo interstitial disease and of an, uh, an increase of extravascular lung water, but it is not specific. And if you look here, if, if we found that lung sliding, ab abolition or reduction of lung sliding is very specific of IRDS and allow to uh, eliminate an acute pneumoronary edema. He found also that there's that, that, that uh, you can find, it in particular, in the anterior zone, a lot of sparrow areas and not in, cardio, in cardiac edema. And it is the same thing for the consolidation if the most dependent zone. And here, the lung pulse, indeed, is the same side of the lung sli sli sliding reduced. You have a... a um, a rigid lung with a low compleus, and there is no such movement. So you have the lung, the reduction of the lung sliding, and you have the transmission of the cardiac contraction with the lung pulse. And you can see here, just to show you, that in a very good uh, pick, well, when uh, in the most famous, one of the most famous. Uh, Journal of Critical Care Medicine, lung ultrasound now is admitted as a tool for rapid diagnosis of acute respiratory failure of IRDS. In, in, this, in this paper in Africa, they used ultrasound to uh, make easily at the bedside with uh, poor uh, uh, Poor, um, with poor technology, with quick, te with quick and cheap technology, the diagnosis of IRDS. So we can use, we can diff when we have a very hypoxemic patients with a um, diffuse alveolo interstitial standard, we have to look for spare areas, subpleural consolidation, abolition of the lung pulse, consolidation in the lower lobes, to affirm that our patient is an IRDS and not an, an acute pulmonary edema. Once this thing is done, we have to ventilate the, our patient. We are going to use also our ultrasound machine. This is typically a bilans. This is a co, um, sorry, a rib, a cartilaginous rib, intercostal muscles are here. And you have here the lung sliding. As you can see, there is a lung pulse. The lung sliding is not very pregnant, very, very prominent. And we can see here from the parallel line, there's artifact, this vertical artifacts, typically their B lines. And when there's B lines are regularly separated, maybe their B lines are the sign of a, of a thickening of the septa. And so when we have well separated B lines, we have a true interstitial syndrome. At a higher level, when there is more increase in extravascular water, lung water, we have an alveolo interstitial syndrome with alveolar flooding, and we have on, for, on CT scan, ground glass area. This ground glass area appears on lung ultrasound as coalescent B lines. You have here the rib, intercostal muscles, the lung sliding is not very, very abolished, but I have, according to the cycle of respiration, 
separated beeline, irregular, or coalescent beeline. So in this patient here, I have probably, probably an alveolo interstitial syndrome with ground glass area. And when the loss of aeration is total, I have this picture, the lung consolidation. You have here a frontal view, the spine are, is here. You can see here the diaphragm, the lateral chest wall is here, the head is here, and the foot is here. You can see here the liver. Above the liver, I have here a tissue structure. If I look here, this structure is very similar to the liver. In French, we, we use to say when we have a, a, a big pneumonia, hepatization. With echography, we know what hepatization means. And I know that this tissue structure is not is the lung because it's above the diaphragma. And I can see here inside air trapped inside the consolidation. This air trapped inside the consolidation is bronchogram. So these white points inside consolidation are called air bronchogram. And if you can see here, for example, there is in, an increase of the signal with the insufflation, with the increase of half amount of air inside of the consolidation, inside the bronchus. So it's a dynamic air bronchogram. Here, for example, we have two patients, two different situations. Here we have the previous pictures with a complete consolidation of the right lower lobe. There is no increase of air inside the consolidation during the insufflation. And here we have a, a left side because here we have the thoracic aorta. This is the spleen, the diaphragm is there. We have a little bit of pleural effusion here. And you can see here, we are at the expiration. The consolidation is maximum and we can see much more air inside, much more white signals. And you can see here, increase of the amount of air inside this consolidation during this inspir inspir inspiration here. We can, maybe we can increase the amount of in air and maybe we can recruit. And here we have a truly consolidated, consolidated lung and we can, I don't know how to do to increase the amount of air inside without clearing the alveol, cleaning the alveol. For example, we, we, just uh, to show you this picture, uh, this is here, uh, we have here the normal aspect, we have here separated beeline, coalescent beeline, a consolidation. It's a case report. Here we have a lung consolidation, the patient was is hypoxemic, uh, the physician performed the lung bronchoscopy, to uh, clean the lungs. And in the same time, somebody put the probe on the consolidated lung and recorded the effect of the lung consolidation. Where we have the frontal view, we can see here the heart. We can see here the heart because I'm going to stop the, the film at the right moment. Here. Here we have the heart, the diaphragm is here. This is the left lower lobe, completely consolidated. We have no hair. Ultrasound are, co are co completely conducted through the lung consolidations. We can see the heart, okay? And we can see with the aspiration, resolution of the consolidation, coalescent bilines, finally, separated B-lines and at the very, very end, almost a normal aspect. It means that for each level of aeration, you have a pattern. The, the, the aeration is normal. The, gas the lung contains more than 80% of gas. 
we have the lung sliding and the airlines. We have a moderate loss of aeration, airlines disappear, and we have a few B lines. The, we have a severe loss of consolidation with flooding all the, all the alveolus. And here we have coalescent B lines. And when the loss of aeration is complete, total, we have a long, we have a long consolidation with, with a, uh, sorry, we, here we have a long consolidation with a total loss of aeration because uh, of, for example, complete um, a, a gross pneumonia. So it means that, as you can see previously, if you clean up, clean the alveolar, or if you um, heal the alveol, you will see resolution of the, uh, of, uh, the, of, of the disease, and you will go back to the normal pattern. I will show you some studies. Here, this is a Greek, a Greek studies conducted in patients with acute respiratory disease. Indeed, in fact, they here, they were on the right lateral chest wall and they measured the effect of five, 10, 15 centimeters of water of PIP on the area of the right, of the consolidated right lower lobe using their Lung ultra using, you can see here, this is a, just a cardiac probe. For example, we have a frontal view, the liver is here, and here they measured they, they measured the, uh, the area of the consolidated right lower, lower lung at 5, 10, 15. It, and if you have a recruitment, you will observe a decrease in the area. And you can see here, for the, the mean values for the 10 patients. We have here the area. They are decreased with the recruitment with the increase of PIP. And you can see here, with, when, with this decrease in, in, in area, there is an increase with a PF ratio. But the best, is to perform a complete, a comprehensive examination of the thorax. You have to examine the right and the left. And the best, and to report uh, pre preciously, is to divide the, each hemithorax in six areas. Anterosup, anterior superior, anterior inferior, I take the anterior axillary, axillary line as boundary. We have uh, lateral superior, lateral inferior, and we can also examine postero superior, postero inferior with the posterior axillary line as boundary. And for each area, we are going to examine one or two intercostal space. And for each of these zones, of the areas, we are going to give a score. If it is normal, it's zero. If we have separated B-lines, one point. If we have coalescent B-lines, it's two points. And when we have the consolidation, it's three points. So we have six plus six, 12 areas. If the lung is completely normal, we have 12 times zero, so zero. If the both lungs are completely consolidation, the situation is catastrophic, we have 12 times three points. And of course, you have uh, multiple uh, levels possible. For example, in this study, conducted in 40 patients with IRDS. And um, we looked for, um, we compared the recruitment measured by PIP release maneuver to these aeration score. And you can see here, we have a good correlation between the patients, uh, between 
lung ultrasound re-erosion re score, and PEEP-induced lung recruitment. But this analysis is a global analysis. This is a global score. But you can also, with ultrasound, make a regional analysis. Ah, ah sorry, the slide is not here, but, this, but uh, we can see areas by areas, the increase or the effects of the PIPs, of the PIP type side. And here we have the individual data. And here, when you have an increase greater, an increase in score greater than six, it means that you have an increase of lung volume greater than five hundred, and you have a significant recruitment. So how I use echography at the bedside? For me, there are two types of patients. Patients with diffuse bilans. I have consolidations here uh, in the most dependent zone. And when I look on the anterior and lateral part of the lung, I find a lot, a lot of bilans and very few, very few zones of spared areas. In this patient, I will try a PIP try guided on disappearance of bilans. In the review, I said that I tried in this patient 12, 14, and 16, but no, we do, um, we prefer to use uh, decremental um, pap trial. We try at 15 or 16, and we uh, go down, go down until 12, 10. But we do that for patients with diffuse balance. When we have this patient, we call this patient uh, focal patient because we have a focal loss of aeration. We believe that the, we have, uh, in general, a big consolidation in the most dependent, and we have uh, an aeration conserved in the anterolateral uh, zones with airlines. I know that with my PEP, I will not recruit a lot of air in, in uh, the most dependent part. But, and, and, but I'm sure that with high level of PEP, there are high risk of over distension in this uh, ventilated anterior zone. So I perform a PEP trial, but I have an upper limit of 10. Indeed, in this patient now, uh, we prefer to use have a prone position. In this in, in, for this question, this is a French study, and that indeed they look for the for the, the ability of ultrasound to predict the response to prone positioning, and they studied the lower anterior the lower anterior area, and they, they, they found that patients with conservation of aeration is these areas are more responders, more responder than patients with a loss of aeration expressed as diffuse or coalescent bilans. It means that probably focal patients are better responder to to prone positioning, but it's, it, it's, a, it's I don't know if it's, it is a true question. This is also a French study conducted in patients with uh, IRDS, multicentric study, around 50 patients. And they look for the modification induced by the prone positioning, and they studied, and they studied the modification using, ultra, enfin, using lung, ultra, ultra, enfin, lung ultrasound. This is the patient characteristics. There are the two, uh, I don't know if there is something to say about that, just uh, to say that there is no clinical uh, or um, uh, how to say that uh, pressure criteria to determine if patients are high or low responded to prone position. The perfect, indeed, this is the, uh, the, the plan of the study. A long ultrasound is performed before 
the prone positioning, one hour after prone positioning, just before the return to uh, decubitus dorsal, and here, one hour after the return to decubitus dorsal. You have here patients in green, high responders and low responders in terms of PF in patient uh, in prone positioning. And here, we can just, just take a look here. This is the variation of a Russian score just before the, uh, uh, between the echography just before the prone positioning and just one hour, one hour of prone positioning. You have here the anterior part, lateral part, posterior part, global, and this is the global score. And as expected, they found that in high reponder, there is a high increase of aeration in the anterior part. We can see also the same thing here for the low reponder. And for the high reponder, there is a decrease in aeration in the anterior part. And if you look here, this is the, the, um, the variation of aeration score in patient one hour after prone positioning and one hour after prone pos positioning between the first echography and the last echography. So it means that it was, it, it's uh, 12 or 14 hours of prone after after 12 hours of prone positioning. And you can see there is an increase of aeration in the both group. But responders have a greater increase in the most posterior part. If we look now in terms of uh, focal or non-focal, we have here in green focal patients, with, post with mainly lesion in the most dependent part, and non-focal with, cons with, with uh, consolidation in the most dependence and B lines in the entire part. We have here uh, the first and the second lung ultrasound, the variation of a rare score. And you can see here that for the patient in focal, there is a great increase in aeration in the most dependent score. So I don't know if it's a true question, but in fact, because uh, whatever the, the aspect, we know now that prone positioning works in very severe hypoxemic patients, and we have to try whatever is the uh, whatever is the aspect. But when I see the result, I am more prone to do prone position to focal patients. Now, uh, another point, how to use ultrasound to guide winning from mechanical ventilation. We have here, for example, a patient. This is uh, here. This is the right, uh, this is done uh, under, me under mechanical uh, ventilation. The patient is under a pressure support, is awake, the sedation is stopped. We have it's a 85 years old man. He was operated from uh, naotic abdominal aneurysms. The patient is quiet, ventilated with a low level of FeO2. FeO2, sorry. You know it's almost normal. Is this is the right lower lobe? There is a little pleural effusion, but not a. a, a, a a, a good consolidation. Here, I have a small consolidation, a little bit, a little bit of pleural effusion. I'm on the left lower part. This is antero superior, antero inferior of the left chest wall. As you can see here, it's almost normal. And you can see here, we have few B lines, not too much, maybe three maximum. The lung score for this patient under mechanical ventilation with a low level of FeO2 and PIP is 14. So we put the patient on T-tube to know if we can, to, to, to determine if we can 
use the excitation. And you can see here, it's a completely, the Lung ultrasound is a completely different story. Here, we have no more three or two B lines, we have completely coalescent B lines. Here, we can see no more lung anymore. We can only see the heart. We have a big loss of aeration. Here, we have a consolidation. It's, the consolidation seems greater, greater. And here, we can now detect the consolidation in the right lower lobe. And the score, the computed score is now 20. And as you can see here, under four liter of oxygen per minute, we have a true low uh, decrease uh, in SpO2. So it's why uh, we conducted this, this study in France. We take uh, 100 patients. We put them uh, six, in 60 minutes per SBT. We have 86 success and 14 failures. Uh, lung ultrasound. We are not talking today about uh, echocardiography and B BNP was performed before and after the SBT. And uh, for 100 patients, 86 were, uh, conduct, were, were weighted because the SBT was good. And from 86, 57 were good and were definitively weighted and 39 exhibited a next tubation failure. Among them, 14 were intubated and 15 were treated for with non-invasive ventilation. Whatever, around 30 patients uh, had a next tubation failure. This, when we look for the patients with post extubation with post extubation failure, we found an higher score, an higher lung ultrasound score compared to successful patients, to so successful waning patients. And when we look here to the score at the end of the examination, for patients with post extubation distress, we have a significant increase, a significant loss of aerations between the, the, the beginning of the SBT and the end of the SBT. It means that we have a true day recruitment. And for the patients with success of winning, we have no significant surge of lung ultrasound between the beginning and the end of the SBT. You have here the sensibility, uh, sorry, the sensibility, and you are here the specificity. Indeed, when the lung track score at the end of the SBT is less than 12, we have a small risk of post-extubation failure. And we can extibly, um, reasonably our patient. When we have a score greater than 17, we have a high risk of uh, extubation failure and Maybe we can, maybe we have to not extubate to, to extubate this patient with a score greater than 70. No. And in between, the risk is moderate. We don't know. This is uh, the last uh, for again, this is the last example we choose for uh, to show you how we use lung ultrasound in patients. Uh, how to diagnose and monitor complication. And we are only talking about um, um, uh, pneumonia. It is known that in uh, emergency room, in pneumology war, you can easily detect uh, lung consolidation related to pneumonia. You know, when you have a pneumonia, you have a hepatization, a loss of aeration, the lung is consolidated and you know that it appears as a tissue-like pattern. And the constatation of a consolidation in emergency room, in a typical patient with fever, cough, purulent secretion is very indicative with a high specificity and sensibility of 
Community Acquired Pneumonia, CIP. And authors showed that the number and the size of this consolidation, of this consolidation are related to the severity of the CIP. And when it was also shown that when you have a recovery, you can see, you can follow the lowering of the consolidation and the increase of aeration. It is known for that, for community acute pneumonia, but there is nothing on ventilator acquired pneumonia. We can, so there is, for example, this retrospective study conducted by Zagli, and they look here for the presence of a tissue lack uh, of a consolidation, a big consolidation or subplural consolidation. And they, they used also uh, PCT, procalcitonin, to make the diagnosis of that. They found a good result, but this is a retrospective uh, study. Uh, they use, um, and uh, they just should suggest a role for long ultrasound in BAP diagnostic. They proposed this modified uh, CPS score, um, very similar to the CPIS, but they had, they had to this score, the presence of uh, consolidation, B-lines or subplural consolidation, they named it uh, infiltrate to, uh, to this score. And in these retrospective studies, they found a better area under the core for the diagnosis of VAP than the CPIS, okay? In a previous study, very, very early study conducted by Liechtenstein, he was interested uh, of the diagnostic between atelectasy and pneumonia. And he paid close, uh, he paid attention to the aspect on the pub, on, of the bronchogram. And in 2009, he published this study when he said that when you see these arborescent linear bronchogram, it means that you have probably a pneumonia. So this is, for example, the, here, this is a patient. The, this is a transversal view. The lateral chest, chest wall is here. You have here the spine. You can see here the lung consolidation. Here we have a classical bronchogram, for example, around with increase with uh, the inspiration. And we can see here inside the consolidation, the, the arborescent air fluid linear air bronchogram. And we wanted to know if this uh, bronchogram associated to other sign of, of lung ultrasound allow to diagnose safely the uh, VAP. So we, we conducted this uh, prospective uh, study. We include uh, 100 patients with suspected VAP, VAP on clinical and usual clinical criteria. We exclude patients with already known ongoing pneumonia and, contradicted and cont with contradications to fibroscopy. But because we want to make the diagnosis of VAP with fibroscopy, the gold standard to affirm uh, VAP was in the study fibroscopy, the bacterial examination of fibroscopy. And we look in our scar, the presence of the subplural consolidations, and we look the presence of consolidations, and we look for the presence in the consolidations of this dynamic linear arborescent air bronchogram. And for each sign, this is for example, the classic CPIS, we have here for each sign, uh, sensibility and specificity, and positive likelihood ratio. And here, here for example, you can see here the lower or lower consolidations. In these patients, ventilated for more than 88, uh, 48 hours, we always found a lower consolidation. And the presence of 
lower consolidation is not at all specific of lung consolidations. Subpleural consolidations, not specific, not sensible. Linear, um, uh, specific. Two linear brocogram, very specific, but not sensible. It means that patients with, you can, uh, you, you can uh, miss this air bronchogram in patients with true VAP. Sorry. So we try this score. This is analog to CPIS. We, we give point for usual long ultrasound, areas, air bronco, uh, sorry, uh, subpleural consolidation, air bronchogram, and we add, we add the clinical sign of VAP, pureal, purulent secretion. And we have a um, quick score with ultrasound and clinical sign. And we can also add to this score uh, direct or culture examination of tracheal aspiration. We used we score because we wanted to use a score um, uh, at the bedside and very quickly. And you can see here, you have the area under the curve of the diagnosis of VAP for the classical CPIS. The score is very low. CPIS with direct examination. And you can see here, CPIS with direct examination has the same value as the lung ultrasound and clinical score alone. And you can increase the performance of the score when you add to this score the direct examination of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tracheal expiration. This means that in a very, um, you, you, you have um, a tool more precise that you can use very quickly at the bedside in one day. You, you have a suspicion of that. You look to the subpleural consolidation. You look for the most dependent consolidation. You look if, you, is, if in this consolidation, you have a dynamic uh, air fluid arborescent bronchogram. And when you have dynamic air bronchogram, subpleural consolidation, you can affirm, when we have, for, you can affirm with a good specificity, the presence of the VAP. Just uh, to finish, this is uh, it was uh, this is the time I was on the call here. It's uh, one o'clock in the morning. Time to go to bed. Time to sleep. And the nurse called me because the patient uh, became hypoxic, hypoxemic. So I start the examination. And just to sh show you this. This is the clavicula is here. You have here a subclavian there, then an artery. You have a rib, shadow, rib, shadow. I can, I can see here a vascular structure, a beating vascular structure. And the lung is here, completely consolidated. And I can see here bronchogram inside, but this bronchogram is no more dynamic. It, it is a static bronchogram, not influenced, influenced by the mechanical ventilation. This is a frontal view, and this is the same patient in a transversal view. Com completely consolidated, some air inside, but uh, static bronchogram. This is an atelectasy. So I took my fibroscopy. I clean the patient. You can see here the subclavian, uh, the subclavicular vein. You can see here, I have no more of a consolidation. I have here the lung sliding. There is still B lines. This is the, this is the same view on the other side. This is the same thing. This slide is just to remind you that whatever you think, you, once if the examination is performed, you have to look just after the result of your therapeutic maneuvers. You, you believe that it is an atelectasy, 
you make the, the, the fibroscopy, you look after it. You believe that it is a pneumonia, you start your antibiotics, and you will see if, uh, if, it's, it, if it's a VAP, the decrease of the consolidation, the disappearance of the subpleural consolidation with the antibiotics, and so on. You have, the, you have to monitor every day your patients. You have to monitor the repents to your therapeutics with lung ultrasound. So, thank you for the attention. Thank uh, you. Thank I have you. nothing to add. <laughs> thank you, Velay. Thank you so much. It was an amazing presentation. We are very, very excited. Thank you so much. And let's move on to the questions, uh, Velay. Eh, bueno, eh, gracias a todos por, por estar con nosotros. Es momento de, de pasar a las preguntas. Estoy seguro que muchos de ustedes tendrán eh, varias dudas porque esto es algo que realmente eh, practicamos los que nos gusta eh, incorporar el ultrasonido en nuestros pacientes críticos, muchas veces nos enfrentamos a, a varias dudas cuando estamos intentando eh, reclutar o cuando estamos eh, tratando de, de establecer una estrategia ventilatoria, cuál sería y cuál es realmente la utilidad del ultrasonido pulmonar en estos escenarios. Así que yo les invito a participar, si tuvieran alguna pregunta, aprovecho para saludar tanto al doctor Quetzalcoatl Chávez, nuestro presidente de Winfocus Guadalajara, como al doctor Arnulfo Pulgarín, el presidente de la Asociación Mexicana de Ultrasonografía Crítica y Urgencias. Gracias por acompañarnos. Igual, si tuvieran algún comentario, desde luego que lo, me gustaría, nos, va, eh, nos gustaría escucharlos. Igual a toda la, la audiencia que nos está viendo a través de Facebook, si tuvieran alguna pregunta, escríbenla y al final eh, vamos a tratar de, de, de darle las preguntas al doctor y contestarlas en tiempo real. Eh, Dr. Belaid, what about the the abolishment of the 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 pleural sliding uh, to identify uh, over distension? In your opinion, Dr. Belaid, is it possible to identify or to predict over distension only by 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 taking a look at the at the long sliding is it possible or simply you think it's uh, it is not so relevant in patients with ARDS what 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 is your opinion Belay? Um, I believe that you can detect a uh, distension but there is no proof of that mm -hmm. for for example for some so for for some others uh, distension is associated to decrease of lung sliding and increase of E-lines, E-lines. Mm -hmm. But for the moment, we have no proof of that. Exactly. Okay, doctor, thank you so much. Eh, doctor eh, Quetzalcoatl, te voy a dar audio eh, para, eh, para permitirte hablar, Quetzalcoatl, y le puedas hacer tu pregunta directamente, Quetzal. El doctor Quetzalcoatl es el presidente de, la, de nuestra unidad de WinFocus Guadalajara y te agradezco que estés acompañando los Quetzal. Si puedes hablar, adelante. Te per, está, está el audio. A ver, tra, trata de, de hablar. ¿Se permite hablar? Si puedes, te escucho, Quetzal. Uh, ¿Me escuchas ahí, Juan? Sí, perfecto, perfecto. Ah, okay. Adelante, ¿qué tal? Adelante. Muchas gracias por eh, la, la participación. Thank you so much, doctor, for your presentation and the lecture. It's You're always welcome. a pleasure to have a personalist like you here in the, in the webinars. And the question is uh, oriented to uh, one of the principal points that we want uh, to deliver to the patients with ARDS and its security of the ventilation. Uh, I really don't know if you have any paper or you have tried to compare uh, the recruitment maneuvers with ultrasound compared with uh, any other measurements that could give us a security for the patient. For example, uh, transpulmonary pressure or esophageal pressure or any other thing that uh, can tell us that the level of PEEP that we set with the ultrasound, it's secure for the patient. Yes, you have, um, to, just to tell you, there is a very recently um, paper in med medicine, Baltimore, 
uh, written by Chinese, and they, they show that uh, the best PIP uh, can be detected using uh, long ultrasound. But it's a, it's a difficult question, a question how to be sure that the patient, what, that patients are not uh, distended is very, very, very complicate, complicated questions. Um, I'm not sure that, um, I think that you have to use multimodal parameters. I, I am truly a long ultrasound believer. I really believe that uh, we have to use at the bedside every day the long ultrasound for the lung, for the heart, for the inferior vena cava, whatever, so on. But for, for, for detection of distension, I, I, I don't feel very comfortable with lung ultrasound alone. I like to use, you know, the stress index. I like to use to measure the pl pressure plateau. I like, uh, and I don't know if, um, but really, um, no, I, I try to limit uh, PIP to 15 maximum. And uh, 15 for a few hours, not uh, more than 24 hours, but maybe at the very beginning. Um, I don't know why, I'm not sure that, uh, that, is, a, that, that is the solution. I'm, but uh, it, I think that, that your question is very difficult. We, I'm not sure that we can, uh, what, what we are able to, 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 to be sure of the safety of the ventilation with the lung ultrasound alone. Well, I'm not, uh, you, you know, how, how to measure the velocity of the lung sliding. Some people used, uh, I tried to use the um, tissue Doppler, you know, tissue Doppler with echocardiography? Yes, and, of course. And I, I, um, I use it on uh, 20 patients and I have a big problem of reproducibility. I try to count the numbers of E lines after the uh, pleural lines. And it's the same thing because the depth, if the depth, the gain, and uh, all the sign, all these uh, sorry settings are um, are um, determinant for the generation for the genesis of the E lines, and it it is uh, very very complicated. What I know is what I'm sure is uh, when I have arborescent E lines, I'm sure that there is uh, a pneumonia, and I have to perform a tracheal aspiration and start antibiotic. When I have patients with focal disease, uh, I won't try a high level of PIP. I'm sure that this patient will respond to prone positioning and will recruit on prone positioning. And uh, when I have diffuse B lines, uh, I, I am more comfortable to, uh, to use high level of PIP greater than 12, 15, 17, when I don't have the pleural esophageal pressure, when I have the pleural, it's, it's another question. I don't know if I was clear. <laughs> ¿Me escuchas, Ketza? Eh, ¿Necesitas hablar, pegarte más el micrófono o hablar más fuerte? Te escuchamos muy, muy poco. Uh, ahí no sé si me escuchas. Sí, ahí te escuchamos mejor. Muchas gracias. Eh... Yo voy a hablar un poquito en español, pero sí, entendemos pues que eh, el gran problema siempre ha sido eso, ¿no? Uh, dar una ventilación con cierto grado de seguridad. Incluso hay quien dice, bueno, eh, el CIRA, eh, manténlo en esa, en esa línea, no hagas más traumas, no generes más varo, trauma, volo, trauma, eh, a teletrauma y biotrauma y probablemente el paciente va a ir bien. Y, y esa delgada línea de saber en qué momento estoy ventilando con el paciente que sigue siendo complicada, ¿no? Para muchos, entiendo, el ultrasonido es una herramienta que nos ayuda a decir, ¿sabes qué? Se reaireó el pulmón, pero todavía tenemos esos, esos pit talks que, que son difíciles y no son de mediciones 
efecto tanto de presión transpulmonar a uh, driving pressure ahorita que es mucho más sencillo calcularlo en cualquier ventilador. But thank you so much. I understand there is a difficult question because we don't have a lot of clinical trials that have demonstrated uh, a, the most secure method of ventilation that we, I think we have to keep trying and, and keep searching. Thank you so much. I agree uh, with you. Thank you. Sí, sí, sí. Ok, eh, gracias Ketza. Eh, en un momento más, eh, si gustas, eh, te volvemos a dar audio. Te voy a silenciar un poco. Eh, doc, eh, bueno, algo que comenta Ketza definitivamente es algo bien, bien importante. Y me gustaría escuchar también la opinión del doctor Belay al respecto. Muchas veces eh, el, el médico entusiasta por el ultrasonido pulmonar quisiera con, la, con el PIP, con la estrategia ventilatoria, con las maniobras de reclutamiento, desaparecer las consolidaciones que se observan y sabemos que muchas de estas no, no son posibles reclutar. Eh, de hecho, el doctor habló justamente sobre cómo predecirlas. Y eh, creo que algo que nunca debemos de perder de vista siempre es vigilar la sobredistensión, porque al final eso es lo que mata a los pacientes y es lo que debemos de monitorear. Desde luego, el ultrasonido es una gran herramienta para eh, ir evaluando la aireación. Eh, Dr. Belay, eh, I am uh, commenting that and sometimes the physician uh, wants to disappear the, the consolidations with PIP and with high Uh, airway pressures trying to 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 increase the the lung aeration uh, by using the PIP and the recruitment maneuvers and try to identify this aeration uh, with ultrasound increasing more and more the PIP and more and more the airway pressures in my opinion this this can be uh, harmful or, or this can be dangerous for the patients. Uh, and we always have to take a look at the over distension signs. What do you think about it, Dr. Belayde? I, I agree with you. I agree with you. We have to always look to the apparition of signs of hyperdistension. Um, it, uh, um, especially, you know, in, um, in uh, obese, obese patients, in patients with a uh, um, rigid thorax with a loss of chest wall compliance, uh, we like to use uh, we like to uh, to use um, esophageal pressure. To but um, but in in patient without uh, obesity with BMI with low BMI, um, we d we don't put uh, esophage esophageal pressure. And uh, we use only um, lung ultrasound uh, to, to set the PEP. And um, really, when the patient is focal, we are, we are prone to prone position. Voilà. And uh, when we have multiple B-lines, we are not afraid of PEP. And, uh, but, uh, we have, but we follow with uh, incremental PEP, the decrease of the Right. Okay, doctor, thank you. I'm going to read one question in Spanish. Um, el doctor Rolando Juan Dávila dice, en relación al agua extravascular pulmonar en CIRA, si le pregunta al doctor Belaid si en sus hallazgos se encuentra la mayor cantidad de líneas B en el pulmón izquierdo más que en el pulmón derecho. Uh, doctor Belaid, uh, one physician is question about the, if you and your, in your past papers, uh, uh, speaking about the extravascular long water in ARDS, uh, have you found more extravascular long water in the, in the, in the, left, in the left lung more than in the right lung? Is, is it possible or did you find uh, this in your papers, Dr. Belay? No, I didn't, I didn't find this in my paper, I don't, um, but I didn't pay. In, in the truth is that I didn't pay attention to that. For I, I didn't look for that. Right. So I, I did. I didn't find that. But um, now, lung ultrasion is adopted by cardiologists and nephrologists, and they show, for example, that patients in cardiology they they, they show that patients with more B lines 
have a low prognosis and a low survival rate. When patients are ad admitted in cardiologic ward with cardiac edema, they are treated and when they left the unity and when you perform uh, a lung ultrasound, the patients with the most B-lines have the, the, the poor prognosis. And it is the same thing uh, for the patient with dialysis. Right. When the patient leave the, dia the, the, the dialysis with B-lines are the patients with the more uh, poor dia prognosis. Yes. No, uh, no they, they, a lot of people, not only intensivists, not only uh, echographic be believers, uh, believe now that uh, the, these B-lines, the amount of these B-lines is clearly related to the amount of extravascular water. Even the cardiologist, even the nephrologist. And the question is, if um, even in this patient, uh, in, uh, even in this specialty, they showed that when you decrease the lung vascular water, you decrease the numbers of B lines. But the studies were, were conducted in patients um, not very critical. The patients are in the sitting positions. They counted the number of, of B lines. For some patients, they found more than 100 of B lines. And how? Uh, how we can do that in, in, in intensive care? We cannot see the patients. We cannot examine all the lung and uh, to count every bilance. It's So maybe our score are semi-quantitative, but uh, well, I don't know if we have time and uh, uh, the strength, the, the capacity to count very precisely the number of B lines. Exactly. Thank you, Belait. And uh, do doctor, what about the atelectrauma? Do you think it, it is possible to evaluate uh, atelectrauma by using long ultrasound? Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I've read a, pep, a, a, a paper from Argentina, Guzman. Yes. It showed in, uh, in children that the subplural consolidation with uh, the subplural consolidation are not specifics. Are not specific, sorry. And he showed that in patients, in children patients, maybe in anesthesia, that uh, this subpleural consolidation can appear or disappear according to the tidal volume. So to the uh, tidal or not, the tidal recruitment or not. I think it is possible. I, I tried on, on patients uh, with ARDS and uh, um, I, I saw it a little, but um, it is, it is very, very, very complicated to do. They're not complicated to do, but uh, how to report that? It, it, it's a question in, in, uh, with ultrasound. How to report? Exactly. You cannot, you cannot uh, uh, record all your examination. So we have this score. This score is um, indeed semi-quantitative. We don't know. I think that it's, it's a big question to record and to... Uh, to follow precisely, precisely uh, the lung. And the more your lung is comprehensive, uh, your lung ultrasound examination is, is comprehensive, the more you're accurate. But is it possible in uh, intensive care unit? I don't know. Exactly, thank you, Belay. And um, doctor, uh, what do you think about the recent or the last uh, published article from your colleague, uh, Silvia Mongodi, uh, about, and Dr. Chimuelo about the, uh, the long ultrasound score uh, in, in, prompt, in prompt positions on recruitment maneuvers uh, uh, using the, the, those scores instead of CT scan, uh, and apparently, uh, I, I I, 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 I saw this paper. Uh -huh. you, you have to know the story. The story is Piumelo mm -hmm. is a field of Gatinoni, and the both <laughs> doesn't believe in lung ultrasound. They told me that lung ultrasound allow only to study the lung on two centimeters of depth. 
So you can say nothing about two centimeters of depth. So it's why there are CT scan believers, and I, I am also CT scan believers. CT scan is the gold standard, but you have to transport your patient, to wait, to try your PEP, uh, a lot <laughs> of cost and irrad irradiation is impossible. Exactly. So we have to use the bedside lung because but they don't believe in that. In this paper, it was very hard for Sylvia Mangoli to work and to discuss <laughs> with Kiumelo. But they, you can see that there is a good correlation between uh -huh. lung ultrasound uh, with the B lines, EV and the amount of uh, extravascular water on the B line, on the B lines, and the severity of the extravascular. But they did not find these two correlations with recruitment. I don't know why. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. It's very important, your opinion, <laughs> because you're a, a huge expert and, and it's, imp it's important you. to know your, your opinion about these recent published articles. And, and just for finish, uh, doctor, I'm going to take a look at the, at the Facebook uh, questions, if you allow me. You, do you, do you have, are you available? Okay, give me a few seconds. Uh, voy a, a ver si existe alguna pregunta de, en los participantes de, de Facebook. Um, parece ser que no, eh, no, parece ser que no hay preguntas, eh, no, no hay preguntas de, de nuestros participantes de, de Facebook. Eh, bueno, pues ya vamos a, a concluir entonces este, este webinario. Realmente le, le estamos muy agradecido al doctor Belaida. Eh, de, de hecho, el doctor comentó hace en su eh, presentación una, eh, sobre, la, sobre la evaluación de neumonía asociada a ventilador, una, una publicación eh, de él y la doctora Silvia, a la cual tuvimos un webinario exclusivamente de esto con la doctora Silvia Mongodi, a la cual si nos está escuchando le mandamos un, un abrazo y, y, y un saludo y igualmente a su grupo GRIP allá en Italia. Eh, doctor, eh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. I think there is no more questions from the audience. Uh, we, are, we are, we are, <laughs> you have a, a very good Spanish, uh, Dr. Belay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much in behalf of all, of all this uh, enthusiastic community, Latin American audience. We really are thankful for all your contribution in this field, doctor. Thank you for all your papers, your research, your, you. your chapter, your editorials are incredible. I, they are amazing. And really, really, we are honored. Uh, thank you for, for joining us in this, in this webinar. Dr. Belay, uh, do you have uh, the last words or the last message for our Latin American audience, Belay? Yes. Um, so don't forget to monitor. Don't, when, once the first lung ultrasound or the first ultrasound examination is performed, let the sonographer in the room and come back after your therapeutic maneuver. You will learn a lot. Thank wow. you. Thank you, Belay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bueno, pues con esto terminamos nuestro webinario. Les agradecemos a todos su presencia. Les recuerdo que todos aquellos que permanecieron en la plataforma recibirán una constancia por parte del, de, de nuestra asociación con validez eh, curricular por parte del, del Consejo Mexicano de Medicina Crítica. Y bueno, pues les agradecemos a todos. Un saludo a todos los que nos escuchan en Latinoamérica, en Perú, Bolivia, Ecuador, Argentina, Uruguay. Gracias realmente por, por escucharnos. Eh, y pues bueno, van a poder disfrutar de esta, de esta sesión en Facebook, la, en Facebook, en nuestro sitio de Facebook. Además, aprovecho brevemente para invitarlos a nuestro próximo curso de ultrasonido pulmonar, tanto básico como, avanz como avanzado, que tendremos en la ciudad de Guadalajara este 11, 12 y 13 de noviembre. Es una gran oportunidad, nosotros creemos que necesitamos eh, enseñanza de calidad y, segura, y estoy seguro que solamente la encontrarán en nuestra asociación. Estoy convencido de ellos, así que los invito a uh, tomar estos cursos por entrenadores certificados. Thank you so much, Belay. I'm going to finish Muchas this webinar. Gracias. gracias, gracias a ti, Belay. Thank you, thank you so much. See you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.